God bless you on this Monday. Coming back with another message titled, Here Comes the Judge. Back in the day, there was a song that called, was called, Here Comes the Judge, Here Comes the Judge. I'm going to be reading some scripture, and this message again is called, Here Comes the Judge. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Yahushua Yamashiach. We give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that your word is going to go forth and not come back void. It's going to accomplish and prosper where you're sending it right now. Command every yoke to be destroyed, every burden to be removed and burned at the seed and at the root by the blood of the Lamb and the power and fire of the Holy Ghost. Saint, and we serve you notice right now, you must loose the saints that are bound and the sinners command the fire of God to usher them into the kingdom of God, reflecting the character, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. I'm going to be coming from Revelation 19 and verse 17. Remember, this message is called, Here Comes the Judge. God sees it all. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air, Come gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men, of horses and their riders in the flesh of all people, free, slave, small, and great. Then I saw a beast, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse. Now this rider is the Messiah. And their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded or deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorge themselves on their flesh. Now, here we see something that's going to take place in the future. We have proof and evidence of God's judgment falling in the Old Testament, falling in the New Testament. But what about right now? This message is called here comes the judge. Now, if you want to find out who this writer was, look in Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, symbolizing the purity and holiness of God. The writer is called faithful and true, with justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. Victory. He has a name written on him that no one but he himself knows. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. So even in John chapter 1, St. John, we see the scriptures, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and made manifest in the flesh and dwelt amongst us. We know that that's talking about the Messiah. You say Jesus, I say Yahushua. That's his proper Hebrew name. So it says the armies of heaven were following this rider on the white horse, dressed in fine linen, Verse 15 of Revelation 19, out of his mouth comes a sharp, sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. Rulership, authority, power, might, 
strength. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this is the Messiah executing in the future the judgment of the Father. One of the books of Peter says, judgment, correction, rebuke must start in the body of Christ. It says house, but it means the body of Christ. This is why we saw things like PTL, Jimmy Swaggart, Carlton Pearson, who taught demonic doctrine and didn't repent, became a reprobate, cancer left him, then it came back on him. Eddie Long never repented of his pedophilia, sodomy, he died in his sin and went straight to hell. The judgment of God is real. Here comes the judge. <clears throat> now, again, I'm going to read some incidents that took place in the Old Testament. A lot of people think today because they haven't been caught, arrested, or no punishment has been put upon them, <clears throat> excuse me, that they can get away with their dirty deeds. Remember, here comes the judge. In the tower, the Old Testament rather, Genesis talks about the Tower of Babel. They tried to construct a building to go from heaven to earth and they wanted to take over. God scattered them, confused their language, and it became Babel, meaning confusion. They didn't get away with it because the judge showed up and scattered them. Genesis. You'll find that. King of Assyria tried to attack King Hezekiah. 2 Kings 19. And God sent an angel to kill 185,000 of the Assyrian soldiers. The king woke up, freaked out, ran to another country, and his own son killed him. You'll find that in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Here comes the judge. What else happened in the Old Testament where the judge showed up and his wrath came upon mankind? Noah's flood in Genesis chapter 9. Another incident. Here comes the judge. Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19. Lesbianism, pedophilia, homosexuality, and rape and murder, robbing and plundering, God's wrath destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and three other cities, if you study it out, Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt because her heart was still thinking about those sinful things and activities. Right now today, the Dead Sea is there, nothing grows, and there's a stone pillar of salt which is Lot's wife. Watch out, people. Here comes the judge. Also in the Old Testament, Pharaoh in Exodus 15 was drowned in the Red Sea because of God's judgment upon him and his people. Now, in number 16, there's something very interesting. There's some tribes of the Hebrews that came against the authority God gave Moses. Korah, Dathan, and Abram, with their families, were swallowed up inside the earth by God's judgment. These were his own people. Here comes the judge. You'll find that in Numbers 16. You check the book of Joshua, chapter 10. God sent hailstones down upon Israelites' enemies and destroyed them. Even in the Six Day War, I believe it was 1967, where the enemy was shooting at Israel, their missiles and bullets were dropping short, weren't hitting the Hebrews. The Israelites won a Six Day War, something that was never done in the history of mankind, before or after. Watch out, people the body of Christ. Here comes the judge. 
Watch out, pastors. Watch out, ministers, who are walking in rebellion, raping, seducing, cheating men, women, boys, girls, and you're not repenting to God. You haven't apologized to that young girl and her family, that young boy and his family. You've been seducing girls, boys, raping, cheating, lying about tithes. That's not of God. Watch out. Here comes the judge. Also in the Old Testament, Elijah called down fire from heaven, burned up 102 of the enemy's army. Find that in 1 Kings chapter 1. Queen Jezebel was destroyed and killed by Jehu, who God anointed in the Old Testament to be his judge. You'll find that in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30, all the way to chapter 10, verse 36. Jezebel was eaten up of the dogs. Watch out, people. Here comes the judge. Leaders that claim to be spiritual leaders in the body of Christ today. Those of you that are still teaching tithes. Those of you that are cheating people out of their money. Manipulating, lying, seducing others with doctrines of devils. If you don't repent, watch out. Here comes the judge. How do I know? The Bible talks about the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God's judgment, wrath, anger, correction, discipline, punishment must start in the body of Christ. Take your natural body. When it has an infection, your body is designed by God to fight off that infection. They come out through your urine, through your stool, or through medication. But the body automatically starts fighting those germs because that's the way God designed it. And God is coming back for a body of believers without spot or wrinkle. Watch out. Here comes the judge. King Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, faced a negative situation. He sought God through the prophets. God said to the choir for, let them sing. He did it. God confused the enemy armies and they killed each other. God's judgment fell. He's a sure God. He may seem slow, but he's sure. So for those of you again, that are saints, wives that don't want to close your mouth during an argument, watch out. Here comes the judge. Husbands that are physically abusive to your children or your relatives, young or old, verbally, physically, watch out. Here comes the judge. God sees it all. If you don't repent, you're in trouble. What else in the Old Testament? Haman, in the book of Esther, chapter 7, came against the Hebrews and was killed, along with his sons, and destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel chapter 4, verses 33 to 37, was so lifted up in pride, God gave him a prophecy and sent a disease upon him called locomos. It's a very rare disease. Hair grew on his body. He grew claws and fangs. And he was driven out of his kingdom and ate grass for seven long years. Check with any doctor. It's a rare disease. It exists. God's judgment is sure. Here comes the judge. And until Nebuchadnezzar repented, he then he got the living. But for those seven years, all that pride had to be broken down and finally realized God of heaven is a big boss. His son, Belshazzar, took the holy vessels from God's temple 
was partying and the handwriting came on the wall. Judgment came upon him. And Daniel chapter 5, verse 30, here comes the judge. King Herod in Acts chapter 12, New Testament, got up, gave a speech. People applauded him, idolized him. When God said, I will have no other idols before me, he took all that glory and he was struck down by the angel of death sent by God. And it says worms started eating his body right away. Ask any forensic scientist. Normally it takes three days or more for the body to decay and for maggots to start eating into it. But God had that thing happen right away to let people know it was God, the judge, in charge. New Testament. Acts chapter 5. Two believers lied to the Holy Ghost. Husband and wife, Ananias and Sapphira, tried to cheat God out of a real estate sale. One came in, lied, dropped dead. Three hours later, the other partner, spouse, did the same thing. Peter said the same men that pulled your spouse out dead. It's going to do the same to you. Immediately, they dropped dead. New Testament. We're still living in the book of Acts, people. You better get your life in order. These are live examples and God's point is, it happened in the Old Testament, it happened in the New Testament, it's going to happen in Revelation, and it's going to happen now. Because God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His word also says he laughs at the wicked every day. Why does he laugh? Because the wicked thinks they're going to get away with things. Corrupt politicians, families, entertainers, celebrities that are involved with a $150 billion industry of sex trafficking are going to receive God's judgment now and later. Example, the fires that took place in Hawaii, the children that were missing. Did you not know there are tunnels built underneath that property to transport those kids out of the area somewhere else and ship them off that island into sex trafficking? God's judgment is coming. You saw the commercial with Dolly Parton and Rock talking about we got the product and so-and-so has given and so-and-so has given. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it. This is the truth. Dolly Parton was involved. Rock is nothing but a homosexual. And then Kevin Hart, our lovers. That sodomy, God hates. Watch out. Here comes the judge. God sees it all. As a matter of fact, Rock actually owns that property where those fires were. Epstein and all this crazy stuff. Oprah Winfrey involved in sex trafficking. Don't believe everything you see on television because social media has a demonic way of influencing people to blind the eyes of the viewer. You have to search and research and God is bringing forth his truth today. Watch out, here comes the judge. Presidents, politicians, and high-end businessmen, mainly, going to the Bohemian Grove, over 2,000 acres of a private club, worshiping an owl, demonic worship, getting involved with homosexuality, Barack Obama and others. Watch out, here comes the judge. Back to Revelation 
19 and 11. 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, come gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men, leaders, their horses, meaning their vehicles are going to be destroyed, their riders, and all the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. What does that mean? Those that think they're free and getting away with it, and those are the flunkies who are involved with these different organizations. I seen something on 48 Hours where a young girl was suspected of being a rat on this drug group. Young drug dealer had her killed. Come to find out she had nothing to do with rat. She died an unfortunate death, shot her, burned her up in the car. But he ended up pleading guilty because he felt guilty. Why? God dealt with his heart. He had done wickedly wrong. He got caught. He's in jail right now took place in Texas, where murder is automatically a life sentence. The other guys involved got charged as well. Wicked, you're not going to get away with it. Here comes the judge. Revelation chapter 20, verse 9 says this. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven. But fire came down from heaven. Here comes the judge. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Devoured who? The rebels against God. Watch out, deceivers. Watch out, pedophiles. Watch out, sodomites in the pulpit. Watch out, false teachers in the pulpit, on radio, on television, on YouTube, on podcasts. Watch out. Here comes the judge. Revelation 20 and verse 10 says this. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is revelation. This is an example of what's going to happen. But what is God saying? Talked about the Old Testament. Talked about his judgment in the New Testament. We're still living in the New Testament. There are going to be supernatural acts of God that scientists and investigators are not going to be able to explain because God's judgment is going to start falling in this day. Back when I was with Christian Outreach Pastor Fuller, Evangelist Dean White told a story about how she was ministering underneath a tent service. Some hecklers were in the back disrupting the service. She didn't say anything. God said, keep teaching and preaching the word. She was an evangelist. When the service closed down, the hecklers went down the street. Evangelist Dean White was still hanging around the area, getting herself relaxed and this, that, and the other, refreshed. Those men, young men, went down the street. Five guys jumped on these brothers and just about stabbed them to death. God's judgment is real. I've talked about in the past how when I was unsaved, certain people came against me. Those people are either dead, have gone to jail, sick in their bodies, and some are not here. They're not here. They're not here. You need to think about what you're doing. You need to think about giving your heart to God seriously. People in the pulpit and so-called spiritual leaders, you need to think about truly 
representing God because that foolishness that you've been doing like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Sidney Trim, Juanita Bidem, Paula White the Hoe, all of that foolishness, Tyler Perry promoting homosexuality and lesbianism, that is not of God. It's not of God. So watch out. Here comes the judge. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Yahushua Yamashiach. Your word is going forth and I thank you for bringing the harvest. I speak as a prophetic voice that your judgment will start to fall now, starting in the body of Christ and outward in the matchless name of Yahushua Yamashiach. You want to give your heart to the Heavenly Father, say, Lord, take my heart, cleanse it, wash it, wash sin. Set me free from Satan's kingdom. Wash me in the blood of your son, Yahushua. Take me into your kingdom. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Open up your word to me. Speak to me. Guide me on a daily basis. In the matchless name of Yahushua Yamashiach. If you're sick in your body, Heavenly Father, I thank you that as a born-again believer, your covenant says, healing is mine. I believe I receive. Stand on the word. Speak the word. Play this video. Play videos of healing. Reading of the scriptures. Psalms 91. Psalms 103. Psalms 107. Isaiah 53. The Gospels, especially Matthew chapter 8, Luke chapter 4. You need to be playing the Word. And many of you that are saved need to repent of not witnessing to people in your family, your neighborhood, and doing the same that I'm doing, if not better, through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. Speak the Word and spread the Word not downing people, but lifting up God in his kingdom. That's the purpose of our lives, to please God. So God bless you. Come to God, and remember, here comes the judge, because God sees it all. Bye-bye.